the Monolith Film Podcast. I am Lee Byrne. I'm Nigel. I'm Joey Byrne. Today we're going to be talking about Rubber. Quentin Dupree made this movie back in 2010. It is uh, about a group of people in the desert watching a movie. And the movie they're watching is about a tire that becomes sentient and has psychokinetic powers it kind of just goes on, what, like a killing rampage, I guess? Pretty well. It blows up some small animals, blows up some people's heads. <laughs> Fun enough. A live movie at that, too. So there's no screen in the desert. It's there. Yeah, they have, like, binoculars. Yeah, they're binoculars yeah. watching the tire as it moves along. Not much more of a summary than that, but no, uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah, what else is there to say? There's not much to... <laughs> in terms of plot. Yeah. It, uh, it played at Con in 2010. Yeah. And, uh... I don't know how it did. What do you guys? Uh, what do you guys think? Big fans of the movie? I like it. I'm into it. <laughs> um, I thought it, I got way more into it the second time. Like the first time, I was like, I don't think, even think I finished it the first time I tried to watch <laughs> it. I was like, this is stupid, and I <laughs> left. I was watching it with Yuli. Yeah. And I I remember because we were watching it the second time for the podcast, and uh, I remember not remembering things. Being like, this must yeah. have been after I, I, after I left. After, gave I, up, after I gave up on it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I must admit, despite how much I like this movie, I fell asleep the first time <laughs> <I> <laughs> watching it. <laughs> so I, I had to rewatch it then. And yeah. It, it's really a movie that you can't invest too much, uh, too much in it. You, you can't care too much about it. But you can appreciate it, you know, for what it is, for sure. Well, I think the tire is a better actor than most of the fucking people in it. Oh, yeah. yeah. That tire is good, dude. Dude, fucking uh, Steven Spinella, the dude who yeah. plays the cop. Yeah. He's good, man. <laughs> I love the tire. Give me a break. All right, dude. that's a good point. That's that a good tire's point. a I don't know. banger. I don't know, guys. <laughs> that. Uh... That scorpion at the beginning had like a Sean Bean level dying scene. <laughs> oh, it it was, <laughs> yeah, it was amazing. Flip and fall. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's what did funny. you think of it, Nick? Uh, that's a fun movie. Nothing wrong with it. Yeah, fun enough. I didn't like the ending. Like the first two thirds of the movie, I thought were good. Okay, the last yeah. third, I didn't really like. That's actually a pretty common complaint. Yeah, it yeah. kind of just forwards to a bogus kind of ending. Right. Which is yeah. Um, it's funny because I think that's what you're supposed to feel about it. Yeah. <laughs> because even the guy who's watching in the desert says, what the hell are you guys doing? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. this isn't a good ending at all. Well, even after they do that cut to three days later, it, uh, that's when you get the two cops playing chess. Mm. And one of them says, hey, you can't do that. Yeah. Like, that's against the rules. <laughs> He's like, what do you mean? Can I or can I do it? It's like, well, you can do it, but it's illegal. It's illegal or whatever yeah. he says there. <laughs> So it's almost like he's talking about the fact that the movie just cuts to three days later because it doesn't know how to end. Right, yeah. Definitely. It doesn't really have a beginning either. Yeah. It just kind of starts. Tired, just wakes up. Yeah. It starts with the car. (laughs) (laughs) Like driving up to meet this guy and hitting random chairs along the way, like going out of its way in the road to like knock over very flimsy chairs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the, the cop jumps out of the trunk. Yeah, that's true. And get, gives Lieutenant gives Chad. his sun gives his sunglasses to the driver in exchange for a gl- full glass of water. Yeah. Gives a monologue, an introductory some introductory passage, and then dumps the water. The passage yeah. about the monologue about uh the meaninglessness of, I guess, certain film aspects. Um, even though a lot of the f- examples that he gave were not very meaningless at all. Yeah, yeah pretty bad example. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty bad example. Well, it, it, yeah. they get worse and worse, right? Because like E. T. Why is he brown? No reason. Yeah, that I can buy. Yeah, well, there's no particular maybe reason. His planet's close to the sun. He needs some. <laughs> he gets tan. <laughs> you never know. Well, yeah, yeah. like <laughs> it's the, it's not important. Basically, right. is the point. He could have been blue, and then <laughs> doesn't what's, really matter. Yeah. That would be ridiculous. I would <laughs> imagine if he was blue, definitely wouldn't have won um, the awards. The next example is uh, love story. Why did they fall in love? Well, obviously, because it's a love story. Yeah, yeah I right? mean, that's what you're writing a movie about, so... Right, so right off the bat, example number two has a pretty good reason. Yeah. <laughs> Next is JFK. Why is he assassinated in the movie? Mm, no yeah. reason. 
probably some political reasons. Probably, yeah, and some in terms of why the movie had him be assassinated, I guess, historical accuracy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then Chainsaw Massacre, why don't they ever use the bathroom? They're kind of, they're, they're a little busy, I think. Yeah, mm-hmm. they're they're probably using the bathroom all over the place. I, <laughs> I mean, I'd be shitting myself if some dude with a chainsaw was after me. And then the last one's my favorite. Leatherface, yeah. knock three times, I'm on the bathroom. <laughs> on the, <laughs> the last one, the pianist. Mm-hmm. Why is he hiding and living like a bum if he's such a good piano oh, player? Oh yeah, that one. Uh, he, it's about a Jew in the Holocaust. Yeah, like, yeah. There's def- a pretty good reason to be hiding yeah. in, that, in that last example. If any of these examples have reason, it's mm. definitely that one. Well, there's also the sausage example, too. That oh, that's true, <laughs> yeah. Sausage yeah, those were the film examples. Yeah. Used, yeah. yeah, well, maybe they're talking about how it seems like there's no meaning to some of the things that happen in this movie, but really they're trying to say that there is a meaning. You just have to... Yeah, that's what I was going to say. In some cases, look for it, but I guess in the terms of the penis, you don't really have to look very hard. Yeah, no, not really. Well, that's it. Like, I'm inclined, because he claims that afterwards that this is a, an homage to no meaning, mm-hmm. to that element of no meaning. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, I guess that doesn't necessarily mean the movie itself has no meaning. Mm. I mean... Because if all of his examples of no meaning have meaning, then are we really supposed to take his word about the movie? Yeah, this definitely seems inauthentic. Not to mention it, uh, it uh, like it seems to be like they're trying to say something, having the audience in the movie oh, yeah. watching the scenes in yeah, the movie, yeah. not just us. It's like some some meta analysis or something. Yeah, definitely. Of like the film watching process. I think it's like a, a satire on the kind of B-movie, mm. kind of horror movie, slasher, whatever, $5, yeah, yeah. make a movie kind of thing, but yeah. I don't know if it does it well enough, because the satire kind of, the satire itself doesn't really have a point. Right. But is that the point? <laughs> <laughs> and even if, I know what you mean though, because even if that is the point, I don't think it's enough of a point. Mm-hmm. to work the most common complaint about the movie is that it would definitely have worked better as a short mm. it's just like this still a short hour 20 the movie yeah it's not that long yeah not too long like this mm. this concept or whatever is too thin to be able to stretch, stretch it out for a feature length I'm not sure about that right. if it was short we'd watch it be like oh cool it's a short about movies with no meaning and then that'd be it I think that ending was kind of like a joke on the the kind of way the B movies are made. Mm. Where like you have one movie, maybe it does okay, and then you have another one, and then you have a thousand more. Yeah, and they're okay. going into Hollywood to make a million just right. Sequels, yeah, more and more sequels of the thing. True. Yeah, I think that's what the reincarnated uh, part was at the end. Like, all the tires. Yeah. Yeah, you have to imagine all these crap sequels. That <laughs> that's a pretty good point because it was kind of stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. What do you guys think of the uh, the people watching the movie at the same time, and then kind of halfway through, the uh, Lieutenant Chad says, "It's okay, no one's watching. We don't have to act anymore. Go back to your families." Yeah, yeah. I love it. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. I like the audience a lot. I think uh, they do such a fucking good job at like saying exactly what the people. actual audience is probably thinking. Mm. Like, there's such a, an accurate stand-in. I'm hungry. When are we going to eat? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's all cliches, right? Right, yeah, They're exactly. They're talking almost completely cliches. Yeah. Like, uh, just, like, talking about the movie or, like, telling each other to shut up and mm. stuff like that. Yeah. There, there was a good tire blowjob joke. Yeah. Funny yeah. enough. <laughs> By an old lady. Yeah. <laughs> Nonetheless. Or, like, uh, when the tire jumps into the pool mm. and then it starts to sink. Yeah. You, you said out loud, aren't tires supposed to float? And then the audience in the movie That's said true, out yeah. loud, aren't tires supposed to float? And yeah. our tube floats? No, our tire sinks. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, it That's sinks. How do you know? We just saw it. Yeah. Flawless so I, logic. But, I mean, then, if the audience in the film represents the audience watching the film, how are we supposed to interpret them being poisoned, poisoned and yeah. dying? The, to fed the poison drink you. Yeah. I guess I guess it's if they if they buy into the 
to the garbage that the film industry is feeding them. I don't know. It's like they're not like they're not living. I don't know. It's like oh, I think you're I think you're right. They're there. sucking them dry. Basically, the yeah. film industry is sucking the audience dry until there's nothing until hmm. there's nothing left. Interesting. When you watch all the goofy stuff, you just get stupid. Blah, 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 yeah, kind of thing. and then you die. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. And then there's one the one guy who didn't who didn't eat the turkey who didn't I guess. He was, he was the only one who was up early, the first one who knew where the tire was. He was the only one who was like, seemed to be... I don't think, I don't think he slept. Really he paying, yeah, he was like the only one really paying attention. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, that's pretty interesting in itself. It's like, he's the guy who actually cared about watching it, wasn't complaining about yeah. anything. What happened when the, the lieutenant says, oh, no one's watching? They're saying that the, this kind of movies and stuff, they only have value when people are watching them. Mm. So we kind of put the value on what we're watching. Mm. So I guess he's the only person who's invested in it. Everyone yeah, else is thinking, well, oh, I'm pretty hungry. Wait, hey, shut up. You do it. He <laughs> just watches the whole time. Go talk about it over there. <laughs> you go over there. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, he, he's the only one who uh, who's giving something like that any value. Mm. But he's the one who places the value on it. Right. It's interesting that you were interpreting it as... A criticism of the industry on the audience. Right. I viewed it the complete opposite way. I a thought, criticism of the audience from the film industry. Yeah. Well, I think it. I think it was both. Because I saw it as, like, the audience is in one sense being punished mm. for their lack of uh, appreciation mm. for the art of the film, but also just like the the crowd nature of an audience and the consumerism nature of an audience right they just devour the turkey right at first glance just like they devour Mm -hmm. you know whatever pop movies are airing that kind of thing and then the only dude like you said who really appreciates the movie is able to outlive everyone Mm -hmm. but even then he becomes a different type of bad audience member Mm -hmm. right he starts to he thinks because he's devoted so much time into this movie. He knows better. He knows better. He mm-hmm. starts claiming ownership. Right. You know? It's like the... He tries to change it himself. All the fanboys kind of thing. Yeah. That type of audience member. Right. And so then he must also die. He's... But he gets killed by what he likes. So he's kind of so invested in it. Yeah. Which, that it which kills... happens so often in his life. <laughs> yeah. <you know? laughs> it's, what, it's what you love doing that ends up killing you. <laughs> well, I mean, preach. <laughs> <laughs> Not to get uh, too topical, but like, just look at every time a new Star Wars movie comes out. Oh, too topical. <laughs> <laughs> new Star Wars movies. <laughs> no, yeah. like, there's always that split in the audience, right? There's the people who just watch it because it's pure entertainment, right? And they, some people will claim that they don't appreciate it properly, and then there are those who, you know, think they own the franchise because they're such big fans. Right, yeah, that's and true. And they, you know, throw a fit every time a new movie comes out and it's not exactly what they wanted. Mm, that's true. <laughs> big babies. Yeah. <laughs> everyone's a, everyone's a, every audience member's a big baby. <laughs> either, either, you they're, fo- either, they're, <laughs> either they're babies, either they're happy babies just taking in the entertainment or there's mad babies just not mad happy babies. with what's given them. The thing that I still don't quite get is like to whatever interpretation of the audience we choose how does that tie into the rest of the movie like the actual plot the actual plot <laughs> like yeah, the, the tire actual tire killing, killing people Give and the actual and everything else that happens uh, yeah I'd, apart from the audience I don't think any of that has any any reason I think it's just yeah? supposed to be just exploitation that you watch and go oh yeah it blows some more heads <laughs> go ahead and that's how, how we're supposed to see it. Yeah, it's almost like the random violence of popular movies. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just for views, you know? It's just for for selling tickets, right? Yeah. Like you said before, it's like those pumping out the, those B-movies just mm-hmm. for the quick buck. There's the thousand tires at the end. You just need people to watch the first five minutes. You don't need an ending. Fuck yeah. You got the it. head exploding at the beginning. Yeah, as long as they pay full price and it doesn't Perfect. matter what, yeah. what they want. <laughs> well, so then... Yeah, I mean, so I think each separate part on its own would be pretty weak. Yeah. As a as a statement, but all together, like the statement about 
the movies, the statement about the audience and the statement about the industry taken all together. It's uh, it's not bad. All together, it's, uh, it's good. Like, I had a fun watch it. I had a fun time watching yeah, it. Yeah, I think it's a fun watch for sure. <laughs> yeah. I think, uh, I think separate, they might work even stronger. Even stronger? Yeah, I'm going to disagree with you pretty heavily on that. Uh, I think, like, if there was, like, two short films, yeah. right? one <laughs> of just the audience yeah. watching a movie, and we never get to see what they're watching, yeah. it's just them doing that whole thing, mm. and then a separate movie of just the tire, and they're completely unrelated... I feel like <laughs> might be hard to get the idea of the critique. Though. Might be I hard. Yeah. People would hold in for that long. Might be hard too. to sell tickets the second time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not saying they're related at all. Oh, okay, but I thought you were saying like, Dupier does does it in two movies instead of one. No, I'm like I'm saying if like if they were actually completely second one sells no tickets. Separate. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I would expect. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know. It seems like. It seems like at that point it's like yeah you had a good idea. Maybe I guess you could have he could have then gone more in depth into them. Which which storyline do you guys prefer the tire story or the viewer story? Uh, definitely the tire. For sure the For tire. For sure the dude. tire. For sure uh, the tire. <laughs> <laughs> the you know the the tire story at first, but then at the end the viewer story. You like the viewer? Yeah. Right? Well, at they kind of mix point, at the end. Though. Yeah, that's true. The worlds collide. But it's I don't know up until. I find that once everyone was poisoned, then the viewer story started getting more interesting when it was the guy, the lone guy, like just yeah. watching by himself. I mm. find that one started picking up interest. Yeah. And at the same time, uh, after the motel, the tire story started, uh, I don't know, getting a bit less interesting. Sort of shifted focus and then, yeah, it came together in the end anyway. Kind of interesting, the uh, in the cop's opening monologue that says, oh, this is an homage to no reason. He, uh, he references, uh, Toby Hooper's excellent Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah. I don't know if that was, uh, supposed to be, a like, a mistake on purpose, instead of Texas, who says excellent, or if he was saying, oh, this movie's actually excellent, you know? But, uh, all the tire shots in the desert look a lot like, uh, Chainsaw Massacre shots. Mm, yeah. When, uh, Leatherface is, uh, he has no, I think it's maybe three quarters through the movie or maybe halfway and he's flipping out in the street with his chainsaw mm, right and as a handheld camera looking at the sun yeah, and okay. then you got the lens flares over the whole screen that's the kind of when you think of that movie you think of that yeah scene in it yeah and the entire sequences with the tires where it's rolling through the desert and going up and down squishing things we always look either through the tire or with the tire but we're always with the sun facing us with mm. these kind of red lens flares in it and uh, I thought it was very similar to uh, Chainsaw Massacre, how that shot. And it's funny that they talk about it in the beginning. Well, Texas was a proper exploitation. Yeah, exactly. Full, yeah. yeah. Like, that's, like, one of the, you know, prime mm -hmm. examples of an exploitation film. Yeah. Which is what the tire story is supposed to be. Right, exactly. It's supposed to be just a nonsense. Yeah. Here's a girl, here's a cop, and there's the bad guy in the story. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking, the shot... Where the maid goes in the motel and opens the thing and the tires in the shower, dude. Yeah. I started laughing. That was so fucking funny, dude. Yeah. yeah that was I think, hilarious. I really think this yeah. movie's fucking funny. <laughs> yeah. It was funny, yeah. Yeah. Like there's there's one the the fucking hitchhiker is trying to catch a ride on this <laughs> kid's <laughs> idea max. <Yeah. laughs> and he's like, Yeah, and he's, it's instead it's of it's not it's picking him up. Be so like, upset. I got no pegs, that's all I got. Yeah, no there's pegs. no pegs. I eat check. There's I look no to, pegs. I paused too. I paused too. <laughs> <laughs> sit on the pizza, come on. And then he stops right in front of the hitchhiker to pick up the dead crow, put it in his dad's pizza because he's pissed off at his dad. Yeah. The hitchhiker's just watching him the whole time. Yeah. And then or, uh, we didn't see that hitchhiker again, did we? No, never. It was I thought maybe that, just for that bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was funny. I thought that it might have been uh, the director doing a cameo or something, but it wasn't him. Yeah, <laughs> it was <laughs> some no. guy they well, threw in. <laughs> so I guess there is the no reason of the movie. Yeah, and I love that uh, when the girl, like the old, like the main girl there, her name yeah. is like Shyla or whatever, but yeah. I don't think anyone ever says her name in the movie. Okay. Um, when she exits the uh, diner. 
she tries opening the doors and they both just collapse. They both <laughs> just fall yeah. over. Yeah. And she's not phased at all. It just keeps walking. Yeah, just pushes through the doors. I thought that was fucking fun. Like, what there's tons of just... Two putting orange juice on her eggs and <laughs> eating it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't think Why would you do that? <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of weird stuff going I on. I guess so. Weird small stuff. But I thought that those jokes were good. But yeah. some of the other jokes were kind of a bit hacky jokes. A bit, like, too stupid almost. <laughs> um... Let me load up a few examples. Yeah. <laughs> Buffering. Yeah, pretty well. I mean, I didn't like halfway up until about until everyone dies. All the dialogue between the audience members, like the jokes that they say to each other. Yeah. I thought those were pretty, pretty obvious, just jokes kind right. of things, yeah. stupid kind of bits. Like, but yeah. I think they're supposed to be just you know the yeah, stupid obvious two, audience. Yeah. But then those tires in the shower jokes. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, tires watching TV jokes. <laughs> Even just like the tire actually watching TV. Yeah. Super fucking loud. Watching NASCAR. Yeah. <laughs> He's watching NASCAR, yeah. That was hilarious. <laughs> to kill the tire, they had this whole thing where they got a dummy with their microphone or yeah. with a radio and dynamite attached to it. They're going to get the tire to blow up the doll to set off the dynamite yeah. and kill it. Why? Yeah. <laughs> that made no... And well, then, it's a lure. It's a trap. It's a, Of course it, it's a lure, like he says, <laughs> but it's like... You know, that's his, that was his explanation, too. But yeah. then he goes in... Obviously it doesn't work. Right? Obviously it doesn't work, right? Because you yeah. blow up the doll's head, it's not going to set off the dynamite. Yeah, I so just, why would it in the first place? Yeah, there's no... I, I, uh, I thought... And I didn't, like, question it too heavily the first time when I watched it the second time yeah. this morning. Mm. I noticed the dynamite isn't even attached in any way no, to the head. Yeah. No. Like not like there's no switch, there's no wire. Yeah, it, but there's yeah. no trigger or anything. It's just to blow up the head they figure the dynamite <laughs> <to> gets <laughs> off somehow. And then he walks into the, the cop walks in has the shotgun and kills the tire immediately. Yeah, he just gets fed up. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's like, like fuck it. <laughs> so oh, he wants to go home to his family, dude. He's yeah, sick he of acting. But it might be part of the chess thing too. Like, how oh, can I do yeah. that? That may as well. Yeah. I can just end it now. Yeah, yeah. true. That's the chess thing. It's Done like, playing chess, just go in and shoot the fucking thing. You can do it, but it's illegal. Well, can yeah. I do it or not? I might as well. <laughs> just so, does it. If you look at the move he does in chess too, it's not even. Like, he takes his queen and just hops over a pawn to go straight. It doesn't do but that. But there's like a million other moves he could have done. It, yeah. It was like a horse move with an extra box. But like, he doesn't, eat, he doesn't even. I think he eats another pawn. He eats a pawn? Like, it's just, like, some nonsense, that. dumb move. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's a pawn there, and he eats it, yeah. Yeah. I mean, how it was set up in the first place made no sense. The whole board is, That's like, true. all over the place. Yeah. Not that I'm a grandmaster myself. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... <laughs> no, but I know what you mean. Yeah. The chessboard setup did lose a few points on me for the <laughs> overall. I'm, uh... Knocked it down a couple pegs. <laughs> I'm no deep blue, but, uh... <laughs> What do you guys think of uh, like this video? If you get the deep blue reference, uh, I'm gonna put that right. Smash in the that sub- <laughs> smash that subscribe button. <laughs> if you love deep blue references, <laughs> if you love non obscure chess references, <laughs> what did you guys think of Lieutenant Chad's uh, reality monologue after he thinks the whole audience is dead? And he's like, "It's okay, guys." not real we can all go home to our families we're done <laughs> he's kind of so i guess the audience keeps the movie in track or the audience is supposed to keep the movie in track with reality because mm-hmm. you can't just shoot a cop and then he keeps going in a normal movie but this is kind of a movie making fun of itself yeah so they're kind of showing like the artifice of film too yeah mm-hmm. that's what i got from it because you kind of have the close-up on the guy and he goes uh, this is all real or something and the other cop goes yeah but you're holding a toy alligator the pants down he's holding a toy yeah. alligator but, like, as an audience, we wouldn't be able to see that unless the frame moved down. Right. Mm. So it's kind of the the film shows us the world that it wants to show us. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's, like, uh, again, just, like, like, the audience is dead. You know, like, the audience, you know, like, a, it's a movie. It's just yeah. a movie, you know? Like, don't fucking worry about it too much. Mm. Don't, you know, freak out. You're, you're just the audience. This is just a movie. It's not real. Relax. Open up the body bag. It's a corpse. Slap it around a bit. Yeah. <laughs> it's cold. How cold? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I love that one. Yeah. yeah. How cold is it? 
He's like, or when he's uh, when he tells his deputy to shoot him, mm. he fucking freaks out. Yeah, that was like, I don't know why this one dude is such a good actor. I don't remember that part. You don't remember that part? I don't remember that he's part. telling because he tells the uh, the female deputy to yeah. shoot him first. And yeah, she says no. Yeah, and he says like, uh, like something like, says, "Haven't you go- seen Deep Blue? <laughs> shoot me." <laughs> <laughs> he goes like, uh, "Do what I tell ya. It's an order." Or but he like order? genuinely freaks out out of nowhere, like he's getting. Super oh, the lieutenant off. Chad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then the other deputy, like, whatever. Yeah, I'll yeah, he just you. does it. He's like, "All right." I guess he's trying to prove that it's all, uh, all a facade. All yeah. Thing. I was kind of the first time I ever watched it. I was kind of hoping once he realized that there was still an audience member alive. And he would die. Like yeah, he would that, become yeah. real. Yeah. I like the part where it's the uh, Lieutenant Chad and the motel owner talking by the pool. He's like, oh, the kid was right. And he pulls up the script. He reads, and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, the killer is a tire. What's it yeah. <laughs> yeah. He tosses the script and kind of looks yeah. around and sighs like, fuck, man. The whole, are you doing this shit? Yeah, the whole, the whole questioning of the, of the father was like super forced and like, yeah, well, he's just he repeating was... the same lines as before. Yeah. His dad just keeps saying, yeah, like I said. Yeah. Like I said. I think the real question is, what is Deep Blue? <laughs> <laughs> what is? I'll tell you after. <laughs> uh, um, what do you guys think when the tire approaches the mirror? And there's just this flashback <laughs> montage? Like, what the fuck is that about? <laughs> He's, uh... <laughs> it, wait, what? Approaches... After he escapes the motel... Yeah, the tire. He rolls up to, like, this trailer. Yeah. And there's, like, a broken mirror standing up. Right. And, and he just rolls up to it. And then he starts just having this, like, visceral flashback sequence mm-hmm. of everything we just watched in the movie ten right. seconds ago. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's And then true. the kid interrupts him. But, like, what? what is... Why is there why just is he... this montage? Scene? Yeah. <laughs> That was weird. Is yeah. it just because like it's a cliche to have a montage in a movie? I it mean, might be. I mean, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of things that just seem to be there because they're cliche. Yeah, like it, like if the tire like experienced some sort of change, like had some like existential crisis about this like flashback, maybe, you know, there'd be something there. Mm-hmm. But he just rolls out. And he just fucks up right after that. Yeah. <laughs> he rolls away. Yeah. The, kid, just, the kid throws a can at him. Yeah, exactly. He just rolls away and what? Just kills more people. It's like, well, that is kind of a goofy thing, though. That movies were doing in like the eighties, nineties kind of times when every character had to have this long backstory mm. for a character to have any kind of meaning in the movie. Okay, yeah. So you'd always see like some character, but you go, "Oh, well, my dad was a drinker or something," and there's always some long either monologue or some stupid flashback that shows you this character's life. To make them a character in a movie, and then it only explains like one small character trait about yeah, their like personality, just yeah. a nonsense thing that you could have got anyways. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it might be doing the same thing with this tire, reliving its life or thinking <laughs> back on its life. Its immediate life, <laughs> <laughs> it literally, like it's the it's, two days. <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah. it's been like uh, the yeah. uh, according to the director, the tire was originally written as like a a pure evil presence with no redeeming qualities. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But he realized while writing the script that tires can't be evil. So uh, yes. he, he, he rewrote the character as just like a dumb dog. I'm glad he rewrote that kind of like walking around doing stuff, you okay. know, like a dog. Okay. The <laughs> fuck? I don't remember. I mean, it's not, I mean, it doesn't take that much of a stretch of the imagination to imagine a pure evil tire. Right, he's already blowing people's heads up yeah. for no reason. Yeah. Why did the logic stop there? Yeah, right, that's what I'm saying. Why do you draw what, the line at yeah, that? Yeah, what, 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 what reasoning led him up to this point and then made him make that final yeah, you're like, whoa, realization? Whoa, whoa. It's like, Tires cannot be evil. I mean, you can... <laughs> Tires have to be like dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't you seen Deep Blue? <laughs> Deep Blue isn't a movie. <laughs> Fuck. Okay, uh... Yeah, I mean, it's like, <laughs> it could easily, you could just say it's possessed by an evil demon, like a being of pure evil, it's possessed, you know? Like, it was a regular tire at some point, since it was just a tire in the desert. Yeah. 
doesn't take that much work. Uh. <laughs> well, the, now that you say that, the flashback then might be to show how much just nonsense there is, or how much no reason there is. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. Because it could have been a demon possessing a tire, or some mad scientist putting something in a yeah. tire. Mm. But it's really just a guy gets a flat tire, and then it comes to life. Mm. Yeah, like the... I don't know, like, like when, in a normal movie... You'd have a proper At, at <laughs> yeah. that point, with a montage, mm-hmm. the montage would be there to explain something. Mm-hmm. You know, it'd be there to remind you of some important element in the of the character's past. You know, that ties in or whatever. But it's literally just everything we just saw. Yeah. Just a tire doing stuff. Yeah. The tire's yeah. life sped up. Yeah. So it's just like that. That's it. It's no just, sense. No just reason. Just tire. I mean. <laughs> yeah. It, <laughs> The tire seems sentient because it notices things around it and it can kill things psychokinetically, apparently, but it's like... Telepathically? I don't care what the word is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, some of the audience does. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Film buff Ethan and film buff Charlie, they care. Mm. <laughs> That's their character's name. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, right. Well, uh, yeah. So, yeah, the point is, like, the tire, yeah, it's walking around and it notices people, but that doesn't mean that it has, like, some some moral, you know, some moral standard that it abides by or that it can even, it's all it knows how to do is to kill, you know, mm-hmm. roll around and kill. Pretty well what a B-movie is supposed to do, too, or some kind of exploitation movie. Just kind of make the rounds and try and get as many victims as you can. Right. To come buy tickets to some whatever movie. This doesn't even really get creative with, like, how it kills people. It's just same thing every time, like... Good effects on the animals exploding, I thought. Yeah, they... Much better than the humans' heads. Yeah. <laughs> you find? I thought the human heads were fine. Some well, of them the were... blood is a bit janky on some of the heads going. Yeah. Well, it looks like the... What is it, The 3D blood effect? The fucking... One of the premier effect plug-in fucking yeah. whatever kind of thing. Well, they did... Um, Originally, they did all the explosions with practical effects. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but he didn't like the way it looked, so they swapped for CGI. Yeah, mm-hmm. so that's probably that's funny because I thought a lot of the heads blowing up looked like bad practical effects. Yeah, I thought so too. <laughs> um, the animals are good though. Animals are good. Animals are good. Animals are good. Are good. Maybe those are real. <laughs> Stick a Roman candle up that crow's ass. <laughs> 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 we'll see if we can. Leave the deep blue jokes for later. (laughs) (laughs) We're gonna stick it in this crow's deep poo. (laughs) What did you guys think of the score? Didn't really notice it too much. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I loved it. Did you? Yeah, I thought it was fucking dope. Like the whole, like it does such a good job at like, uh, because it's such a slow movie. Mm. There's like not much happens. It's just this tire, you know, blowing people up. So the the music actually does a really good job at building tension where tension would have been if it was like an actual killer stalking someone and not just a tire rolling in the desert. <laughs> and then the like the release of tension is always like this super happy, upbeat song. Oh, I do remember saying, yeah, there's some like fun drumming kind yeah. of stuff when he's going down the road. And yeah, that's it. Yeah, those like, are nice songs. Those after nice. he kills the rabbit. He mm-hmm. gets all like upbeat, yeah. super upbeat and happy yeah. that he just killed someone. He's got the bloodlust now. Yeah, <laughs> and the the song is like, I think like the only lyrics is just I do, I just don't want to be lonely, on repeat. And then he <laughs> he sees this girl drive by, mm. and she's like, what the only character he doesn't kill pretty much. Yeah. He kills her image though in the uh, the dummy form. It's true. That's true. You remember the line that sets him off? I don't know. I think... Do it, you slut. Or something like that. <laughs> You're nothing but a rubber shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she keeps repeating. Wow. You're nothing but a rubber shit. Yeah. So, overall, how effective do you guys think the satire is in the film? It was a satire of kind of audience movie. Right? Yeah. Exploitation. How, how effective would you say the satire is? I think... Some... A little more consistency mm-hmm. would have led uh, to a more effective mm-hmm. criticism. Like, like we get the audience, but then it's it's kind of like 
we're interpreting it either as a critique of audience or a critique of the industry. Mm-hmm. But there's no hint anywhere else in the movie to as what is actually being satired. Like, there's the whole B-movie and yeah. stuff like that. But, I don't know, Dead Space. Yeah, there's a bit of filler in it. Yeah. So I mean... As a short, more effective? Right, that's what people I say. So, yeah. <clears throat> I think it was pretty good. As a, as a satire, I got it at the end. With yeah. With the tires yeah. and going to Hollywood. Um... Yeah, I wasn't sure you you were looking at that as like a like the whole sequel gag. Mm-hmm. At first, I thought it was just like a, like they're just gonna go kill everyone in Hollywood. Now. Oh, okay, because I was thinking like, like, isn't it like Freddy gets reincarnated like ten times, or Jason gets reincarnated like ten times, and all through all those movies. Yeah, and there's even like one with him in space or whatever. Yeah, so it's just like stupid premises to keep the franchise going. So yeah. Like, oh, he got reincarnated as a tricycle. Now we can keep the franchise going. Now he has a thousand tires with him. Okay, let's go. Yeah, true. And I think that was like saying, "Oh, that's what Hollywood's doing with all these stupid sequel movies. Get all these tires mm. to go to Hollywood." Yeah. What do you think, Joey? Overall satire. Yeah, I think the problem with a lot of satire is that because it's satire, they don't really try. Okay. There's, like, a lack of effort in the actual, like, execution of the yeah. thing. I find that's a common problem with a lot of satire. It's, like... They play it off too much as a joke. Yeah, it's... If it's too much of a joke, then uh, I'm not going to take you seriously. Mm-hmm. Right. Or because if it's a joke, you go, oh, I'll give it a shit ending. Who cares? It's a joke. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and it's, then... like, yeah, they... Because it's a joke, they don't even care that much about what, yeah. how, how it's, like, yeah. planned out and everything, so... Not a problem unique to this movie, but satire in general for me. It was released on April Fools. Uh, it made a hundred thousand in the box office. Wow, good. How much did it cost? Profit? Um, I don't know. Profit. Uh, on a movie like that, I imagine the most expensive thing would be putting CGI effects. Mm. Uh, it cost five hundred thousand. It cost half a million dollars. Yeah, and they only made. One hundred thousand. Oh, so so they what lost they spend no half four hundred thousand dollars. I wow. I genuinely do not know. I can't imagine what because there's no destruction of property. There's no cars flipping or anything. Wow, those chairs at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah, those are antiques. Yeah. There's, there's two sets <laughs> and a desert. Yeah. And like fifteen people. <laughs> Maybe they shot the whole movie with physical effects. And then reshot the whole thing. <laughs> May as well do it again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what else it could be. Like they just besides they just shot it twice over. I mean, every take we burned the tire. We had to get a new tire for every take. But even two hundred and fifty, like it sounds like. But a the lot. effects were good on the tire. The moving the, uh, tire, moving tricycle. I thought those were good effects. Fully remote controlled. Oh yeah. Yeah. Cool. Mm. They look good. That's funny. I thought it looked like it was being pushed at some parts. Yeah, apparently it's fully remote controlled. They designed the uh, controls and everything themselves. Huh. Maybe that's where they spent their money? They hired some like uh. crazy military grade remote control company. <laughs> Yo, we need to roll a tire! That'll be half a million dollars, please. Here. <laughs> what did you guys think of the, uh, the filmic aspects of the movie? Was it shot nice? Did you guys like oh, it? I, yeah, I actually found it good. surprisingly Excellent. beautiful. Yeah, definitely wasn't bad. Does look like he only has one lens though. That's true for the whole movie. Yeah, I, I did notice that as well. All right, because uh, many shots where it should be deep focus, it's very shallow, yeah. as if it were a like a portrait lens or something he's using. Mm. So it looks like they only have one kind of lens, but with a well half a million dollar budget, fucking get two lenses, asshole. But <laughs> with kind of a low budget movie like that but other than that I thought it was pretty cool a lot of uh, floating camera following characters behind following the tire mm-hmm. yeah. kid on the bike everything looked good nothing yeah, uh, so too. nothing crap or anything in it mm-hmm. the, the director is a musician predominantly he just makes these for fun mm-hmm. like I think he got his first gig uh, making a music video for someone mm-hmm. and then they heard his like music and they signed him on that same label or whatever, mm-hmm. get that from his film work that he's a musician, shot like an artsy music video. Yeah, like the like tire the, stuff, the following the tire. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like the heavy lens flare, the POV yeah. shots. In the in 
Lieutenant Chad's opening monologue, he says that that element of no reason mm -hmm. is the most powerful element of style. Mm -hmm. I think I agree with him on that one. Yeah? Yeah, I think so. Because it's that kind of stuff you, that the, the movie doesn't tell you that you go, what the fuck does that mean? I gotta think about that. Yeah. I think it ties in to what we've mentioned a few times on the show mm -hmm. of uh, style over substance. Yeah. And that, you know, style can be substance. Mm. And so style without reason, just pure style, mm -hmm. is the most, like, substantial style almost. Mm. Like, it kind of creates its own meaning. Yeah, that's a, yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm almost certain we talked about it, was when we did Only God Forgives. Mm -hmm. Right, that whole movie has tons of scenes that are, like, absolutely beautiful, hyper-stylized. But, you know. Yeah. Like, what? I mean, that whole movie is, like... Right. What's going on here, you know? Like, how many shots are there of just Ryan Gosling looking at his hands? A few. You know? Mm. But they're all yeah. just as cool. It's like things that add that don't add to the plot, but it adds to the story. Well, like at the beginning when the bats fly into the movie that you right. noticed. No point for the bats to be there. Yeah. No reason for them. But you go, oh fuck, this is some kind of place. You know, there's bats in here. Yeah. Those are bats. That's it. I mean, even with this movie, right? If we're to believe that the director made this movie entirely with no reason, you know, and we're able to sit here and just talk about it. Mm just because of what it looks like, mm -hmm. right? Because if we're saying the movie has no meaning, then all we can interpret is what we're seeing, Yeah, which is the style. Mm. So style can do what text can't... Like, it's basically subtext versus text. And that style... But open-ended subtext. Yeah. No, exactly. no specific reason yeah. for the subtext. It can be whatever the, the viewer... Uh, Parts on to it. <laughs> yeah, so we're back on Letterboxd. Gonna load up some reviews of Rubber. Because this is definitely a movie that's gonna have some I pretty... some funny ones on. <laughs> yeah, there's gotta be some good ones. Yeah. Soon to be sponsored content. <laughs> I wish, dude. I fucking love Letterboxd. Here's one. One and a half stars. On five. On five. Well-crafted pho photography mm -hmm. and a terrific score are spoiled mm -hmm. by lousy writing and hackneyed gore effects that grew tiresome after the third or fourth installation. Early on, I was fixated by the tire, in quotations. Why scene. quotations? I don't know. Hey, does he not know that it was a literal tire? Well, I found the but it, spectator, in wait quotations. Wait a second. Is he quoting the movie? <laughs> I don't understand this. I was fixated by the tire scenes while I found the spectator side story completely superflu superfluous. Check his bibliography. See who's citing. <laughs> <laughs> Some savvy editing and a rewrite of the third act, and this could have made for a nice little 20 minute short. Instead, we get. 20 this, minutes is a bit. Instead, we get this pile of wasted competence. 50 minute short, maybe? Cut a half an hour? 20 <laughs> minutes? I don't think it'd work. One and a half stars on five? Yeah. That's pretty low. I think that's lowballing it. Yeah. Sure, yeah. Here's a half star. Yeah. He, half on five. Half star, but he liked the movie. Oh, okay. So Makes sense, then. I think he doesn't know how reviews work. Well, here. This movie is it's absolutely... Like golf, the lower, the better. <laughs> <laughs> this movie is absolutely god-awful. <laughs> and I love it. Probably not the greatest way to spend your time. But if you enjoy watching terrible movies, this is worth a shot. Although, be warned, it's more on the slow side. But it's not even a terrible movie. I don't think so either. I've seen dog shit garbage yeah. that's just brutal. But this is, all makes sense. All the camera's good. Yeah. All the cutting's good. I want to. good. I want to go back to that one and a half review that you read before. Okay. <laughs> you said that the, that the whole spectator sequence was superfluous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was one of the main points of the movie. Pretty yeah. Well the main point I of the mean, movie. Yeah. yeah, I mean. The only that, point of the movie. It, superfluous. It's, it's not superfluous if this is the point of the movie itself, like. That this guy just didn't know. I think that guy just wanted the tire scene. Cut out the forty five yeah, minutes. Yeah, I think so too. Just keep the tire, and that's he, twenty minutes. Yeah, short. he wanted to be exploited. Exploited. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, exploit me, yeah. baby. I'm a rubber shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! But 
if you enjoy watching terrible movies, this is worth a shot. Although it's a little on the slow side. This is the half side. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not really sure what this tries to pull off in terms of horror thriller. Granted. Other than some interesting gore special effects. Yeah, okay. Well, I think all everything you said in there was wrong. Though. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, I don't think the gore effects it's, are interesting. Yeah, at all. yeah. <laughs> Especially I the think, last part. I don't even yeah. think they're supposed to be interesting. No, no I don't think it's yeah. horror thriller. To well, to be fair, he, it's more of a spoof. Yeah, he, a outright, yeah. he outright admitted he didn't get it. Yeah. So I can't really blame him for getting, for getting it wrong. I don't really find it that slow either. It's, well, it's, that's... It's weird because it's shot slow. Mm. Like the editing is slow. Yeah. But it's such a short movie. Mm. But I mean, this guy hasn't seen Tropical Malady because that's yeah, a bit slow. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> you want to see slow. Well, uh, <laughs> I watched a 45 minute movie one time and all that happens is it's called Wavelength. Okay. And it's one shot and it just zooms in on a table for 45 minutes and things happen in the background. You hear people talking okay. and a turtle walks by. And it's a 45 minute movie with one shot that zooms in. That's the slowest movie I've seen. Did you like it? It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Very interesting. On IMDb, Rubber got a 5.8 on 10. Yeah. And on IMDb, Wavelength got a 5.8 on 10. Oh. So, what's the wavelength? same movie. What's Wavelength? <laughs> what's Wavelength? That's the 45-minute uh, table film. shot. Yeah, table shot. It's just a table for 45 minutes? Yeah. Uh, zoom. Just a zoom in on the table. You zoom in in the room. Wow. Is this like the full movie or is it just a... I don't even see a table. Oh, there it is. You kind of see it right there. Desk. Yeah, a desk. desk more. Okay. And people come in, things happen. Mm. 45 minutes though, fun enough. Canadian. Oh. Good old Michael Snow. Good guy. Oh, Snow, because he's from Canada. Yeah. Yeah. You got it. There you go. A bastard of the North. This is a... <laughs> this is an... <laughs> this is another half star review. This movie sucks my ass and cock. <laughs> <laughs> How can you give it a bad review for that? That's that's amazing. It's so unbelievably boring and manages to do nothing interesting with the idea they had. Fuck you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's He's a little angry. Clearly take it personally. Yeah. He must have a tire as a family member or I something. Know. I, I mean, paid $700 to go see this movie. I paid 100000 Maybe the <laughs> only guy who bought a ticket. Maybe the movie literally sucked his ass and cock. I like how he says, suck my ass and cock. Not gay. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> suck, suck my ass and cock. It's like he couldn't pick. He's like, they're both so good. Yeah. I'm just going to go, you know, one after the uh, other, you know? It's my ass and cock. It's like, okay, well. What an absolute crock of shit. This is the next one? Just because you open the film with a fourth wall breaking gambit of the things happening in the film are for no reason, doesn't give you the excuse to curl out this festering piece of dog shit. Okay. So bad it made me angry. Okay, yeah, clearly. (laughs) It clearly made you angry. I think, uh... I think... I think because they break the fourth wall and explain that the movie is for no reason... I think that most certainly does give them an excuse to make a movie with no reason. I mean, yeah. That sets up the, the point of the yeah. movie. Yeah. It's putting a mirror on yourself. Yeah. It's yeah. literally preparing you for a festering pile of dog shit. And then you're upset when that's exactly Croc. what it gives Oh, Croc. my bad. My <laughs> bad. Misquoted there. Paraphrased. Listen, let's say. buddy, you paraphrase one more time, you're going to suck my ass. <laughs> <laughs> the lieutenant. I didn't really like the lieutenant. I don't really? Know. Yeah, I don't know. I liked him. Did you? Yeah, I liked him a lot. The only one fair guy I liked. The <clears throat> some of the some of the audience members, but I mean they're audience members. You're not supposed to be. Also, yeah. also this the script was all cliches, so there's no way that you can pull yeah. so many cliches in a row off with complete flawless emotion. Yeah, I don't think these people are supposed to be. But A-list it's like, actors yeah, it's like, <laughs> what do you want? You yeah. want every every one of these nobody actors. No offense. Every one of these nobody None actors to be like them. award winning. It's like they're good enough. I've definitely seen way worse acting. But like the movie itself, movies. being a spoof and a satire, mm. kind of saves itself from having to have big performances or anything. Right. Yeah. yeah. That you, too. We, you can't really judge it on the performances. Yeah. Yeah. Unfair. Unfair critique. Right. So he goes on to say, Unfair. the plot was predictable. 
I knew they were going to kill those people right from the beginning. What people? Which ones? The audience know. members? Yeah, I think the audience members. I oh. think he knew they were going to poison the turkey. Gonna, and he eats the turkey anyway. This guy's eating the turkey too. I mean. And that damn tire rolling scene was unnecessary to everything. Yeah, which one? <laughs> the, the whole movie? The one is he supposed to not move the tire? The tire. We saw a fake rabbit explode. <laughs> yes. That's not satisfying. Are you at are all. you are you are you really upset that it was fake? Because <laughs> did you want them to to murder a rabbit for this? I mean Yeah, yeah I agree. The movie's not that good. So do you want them Armadillo to kill a real rabbit? <laughs> but a rabbit is stupid as hell. It's also a jack rabbit. This guy doesn't know anything. <laughs> so here here are some five star reviews to you know, balance it out. Balance it out. You know, uh, I've, I have a feeling these aren't going to be that much better. <laughs> no, they, they won't. Five stars. I like uh, a fake <laughs> uh, A bit too generous. Just the opposite. <laughs> a bit too generous, if you ask me. I anyway, love yeah. how they play on the fact that it's a movie, so nothing makes sense. Mm-hmm. I watch movies all the time and judge how they shouldn't have shot eleven bullets out of six out of a six shot revolver. This movie literally takes that power away from me by saying they can do whatever they want because it's their movie, mm. and I like that. This guy's a su- submissive <laughs> to to the film industry. He's like, take dominate me, you know, like take the power away from me. Yeah, yeah. So obviously, if it's his fetish, then he's got to love it. Good enough review. <laughs> that. A film about our compulsion to watch total shit and kill ourselves doing it. <laughs> If multiplexes, oh, yeah. with all their junky nacho cheese goodness, don't kill us first. Okay. <laughs> Perfectly draws out all the slasher pervert stereotypes and beats while also being super chilled out and relaxed. I could watch Robert joyously skip and roll through the desert for hours. Fantastic. Robert is the name of the tower. Fantastic mm. review of it. That's a fair review. Very yeah, I think so review. too. Yeah. yeah, perfectly... I mean, well, well, they're open for debate, but yeah, good, yeah, good. Get a wiggle room on the <laughs> yeah, like five on five for maybe. Me. <laughs> maybe it doesn't but, perfectly uh, yeah. do all that, but you know, it's. But for what it's supposed to do, I think it does it. I mean, a way better review than. <laughs> than those, Suck my ass. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> those, uh, yeah. Yeah. Miles, S- this Miles sucks my ass and cough. <laughs> I loved it for that. Yeah. <laughs> Probably the oddest rewatch I've ever had. When my friend kept looking across at me baffled, I just kept telling him that he was never going to get it and that he should just stop trying and Jeez. stop asking questions and enjoy it for what it is. Okay. He calmed down but still didn't enjoy it. Personally, I loved it. It doesn't seem that hard to get, though. Yeah, I agree. A lot of these reviews, just people fucking just lost. Man. Yeah. What did he give it, like five? Yeah, he gave it five stars. Five he stars. Yeah. Who cares that he loved it? <laughs> yeah. The review is like way longer. I'm not gonna read the oh, whole okay. thing. Maybe it sounds. I mean, it sounds like he was more bothered by his friend not liking it than by than than he was more bothered by his friend not liking it than he was uh, like enjoyed by yeah. watching the movie, like fulfilled yeah. from watching the movie. I'll read this. I'll read this next part of that review actually because it's a little interesting. The concept would normally be too high for most directors to grasp. Uh. <laughs> but Zupir has the bravery um. to just accept that the material he's written is completely barmy and go along with it. Okay. And it pays off. Okay. Well, I think to say that this off. movie is like, <laughs> As we established. I think to say that this movie is high concept is quite the stretch, though. Okay, so... You're just going to disagree with yourself from earlier. <laughs> no, this is my opinion. I'm not reading anyone. Oh, okay. I thought you were... Sorry, I thought... No, mind. I'm... Yeah, definitely not this, high yeah, concept. This dude I is mean, saying that the concept is too high for most directors. Definitely disagree, yeah. Yeah. Hard disagree on that one. Strongly disagree. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he actually <laughs> makes the tire have feelings. <laughs> People are fucking stupid, dude. <laughs> there, the, there is let's, no Let's actor. not be too harsh on them, okay? There let's is... not give them such bad rate. Let's not give these reviews such bad reviews, you know, right off the bat. I mean, There is no actor for Robert, but he conveys so much feeling. Mm. Don't ask me how, but in the, okay. scene, in the scene where he is confronted by a water bottle, the tire shows confusion, wonder, and frustration. Mm. It's incredible filmmaking when it really doesn't have the right to be. Okay. 
he's he's really taken taken into that no reason. Yeah, he's taken too far. He's, <laughs> he's taken <laughs> the no reason of the movie into his no reason for the review. It's like ah, oh, it, the the tire conveys so much emotion. Don't ask me how. Yeah, there's yeah. no reason yeah. that I'm yeah. saying it. it. The tire shook. I saw it look in a mirror. Yeah, <laughs> look how emotional this tire look, is. Look, the tire's shaking, and then their heads explode. How is that not amazing and like Oscar winning? I think that the tire. I mean, the the movie does a good job at personifying the tire. Rami Malek? Mm-hmm. No, no. The, the tire. tire. The tire. <laughs> the tire. Yeah. But to say that, like, to specify what feelings he's, I mean, he just kind of vibrates, and you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. He's alive. Yeah. You know, that's about as much as they get done, I think. Like, emotionally, I don't think it has any emotions, really. Right. It's more just a being. It's a sentient being. Yeah. Mm. Not an emotional <laughs> being. <laughs> yeah. I mean, maybe it gets pissed off by being called a rubber shit <laughs> at the end. What? True. I don't, but they call him a rubber shit, and then the, she stops, then the officer talks for a while, then he talks again. Yeah. So I don't know if he's angry at it or he just says oh, nothing else to do I've been standing yeah, yeah that's it it's well, so yeah. there that, then it just yeah. adds to the point of it's not that good of a job making emotions come from a tire right. I mean it's the tire does look at the French woman in the shower and then follows by taking a shower himself it's true mm. and, and then rolls around in bed yeah, yeah but taking a shower is not an emotion so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. can't, can't just make fun of other people's reviews we've got to Give her own reviews to be made fun of. Go for it. Me first? Yeah, so oh. it's all yours. Fuck. Suck my... F- <laughs> <laughs> well, suck my ass and cock. Uh, <laughs> no, uh... Yeah, it was... Uh, it was good. It was It was a good movie. It was... It was funny. And it had enough stuff going on so that no one, for me, story art got too boring, at least. Um, so I'm gonna give it, uh... Six and a half on ten. Six and a half, seven on ten. Nicholas? I think I'd agree with you. Give it a six and a half also. Uh, I thought everything functioned as it should have. But I mean, uh, I kind of agree with the people that it might have been a bit long for okay. the point of the movie. But uh, yeah, I thought it was funny. Six and a half. Yeah, I was thinking six and a half as well. <sighs> wow. Um, my... Uh, um. I like to say this is my favorite movie. That's <laughs> mostly as a joke. Right. My, like, official rating on Letterboxd is five stars. Mm. And my review is just, why do I love this movie? No reason. Mm. But, in all honesty, it's probably, like, a six, a six and a half on ten, mm. near there. Maybe even a six. Um, mm. I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot that works in the movie. There's a lot that doesn't work in the movie. You know, mm. but um, I definitely liked it. Yeah, I liked it too. Yeah, fun enough, fun movie to watch. Yeah, so uh, we can all agree on six and a half on ten. Yeah, six and a half on ten. <laughs> Fair enough. I was just trying to guess what you guys would rate it. So. <laughs> <laughs> Next week, <coughs> we're going to be doing Joshi. Oh, yeah. Fun. Yeah, I'm what's, excited. Uh, what's that about? Um, Joshi is uh, a pretty recent 2016, I think independent film about a uh dude getting jacked off for three minutes getting jacked off for six minutes double that no i'm kidding um directed by jeff uh baina baina anyways um fuck you jeff baina uh, (laughs) it's this dude joshy and he is uh set to get married but his wife commits suicide. So he, him and his buddies go on their uh, bachelor party weekend mm-hmm. anyways to try and cheer him up. And it's just them, you know, trying to deal with grief, I guess. I thought you were going to say he marries a tire instead. <laughs> <laughs> you love Deep Blue, hit you, us up. Hit us up. <laughs> if you love Deep Blue. But uh, it's this movie's got a lot of good actors in it. Thomas Middleditch, Nick Kroll, mm-hmm. Aubrey Plaza, Alison Brie. Can't wait to tune in. (laughs) Uh, This has been the Monolith Films Podcast. You can email us, monolithfilmclub at gmail.com. Send us some movie suggestions. Uh, 
you know, <clears throat> comment on the movies we've talked about. We'd love to hear what you think. That's Monolith Film Club. M O N O L I T H F I L M C L U B at gmail.com g m a i l dot c o m we can edit this out after we'll no, we'll it. <laughs> <laughs> okay uh i'm lee burn uh, i'm nicole you can follow us at monolith film pod on twitter and instagram find us on letterboxd you can find uh my personal instagram through there as well stay off of my personal instagram <laughs> All right, uh, until next week, be sure to watch Joshi, watch yeah. the movies. I'm Joey. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Everyone else, everyone else gets a sign off, and I'm just there like, well, fuck you. All right, where can they find you? You can't find me anywhere. <laughs> the, That's why you didn't get a sign off, I'm in Joey. the fucking shadows. <laughs> I'm in your fucking closet at night. I'm underneath your bed when you're sleeping. I'm always watching, but you'll never see me. I'm being told to cut. (laughs)